In this video, we're going to learn about capacitors with dielectrics. And so previously, we've gone over capacitors, and always they've had free space in between them. So we've had one, a charge of plus Q on the top, a charge of minus Q on the bottom, and that creates an electric field and a voltage between those two plates, but we've always had free space in between them. But it turns out that if you fill this interior with a material that you can get much higher capacitance values and as a consequence you can store much larger amounts of energy and much larger amounts of charge at the same voltage. And this is very useful from an engineering perspective. The trick is to fill that capacitor with the right material and that material is called a dielectric. Dielectric. And this material is special for a couple of reasons. One, it is non-conductive. So it isn't able to conduct electricity. So I can't send a current through it. Dielectrics are also what's called polarizable. And this means that, you know, most materials that I know of are made out of atoms. And atoms have a positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons. So when I apply an electric field to that atom, the electrons are going to want to move up and the nucleus is going to want to move down. Typically the nucleus is, is stuck. It's, it's very heavy. It's very hard to move. But the electrons are perfectly happy to move around. And so I'll end up with a situation like this, where the electrons are sort of stretched away from the positive positively charged nucleus. And so if I fill the inside of a capacitor with atoms, or with what's called a dielectric, as long as it can't conduct electricity, I'll have a bunch of positively charged nuclei. Positive, 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 positive. And a bunch of negatively charged electrons. And when I apply an electric field, because I've got a positive charge here and a negative charge here, those electrons are going to want to separate. They're going to want to move up away from the electric field. So the electrons are going to look something like this. They're going to be separated from their nucleus. Not too much, just a little bit. And because now we've got charge separated inside these capacitors, these separated charges will also generate their own electric field. We can call it an internal electric field. And that's pointing in the opposite direction of the external electric field due to the charge on the top plate and the charge on the bottom plate. So the overall electric field, which let's call the, the net electric field, is just my external electric field minus my internal one. Now for materials that are what's called linear, it turns out that this internal field actually gets larger as the external field gets larger. And so my total field, my net electric field, is E external divided by some coefficient, which I'll call epsilon r because I happen to know the future. And epsilon r is usually bigger than 1, so that my new field, my net field, is smaller than it originally was without this material inside. Now, because my electric field inside is smaller, my voltage, which is just my net electric field inside times the distance, the separation between the two plates, this is also smaller. So it's, in fact, it's 1 over epsilon r times what it would be without the material. So this is what the voltage would have been. I'll call this V old. And so our new voltage is 1 over epsilon r times V old. So now we can calculate the capacitance of our new capacitor with the material inside, which we know is just equal to, in general, the charge on one of the plates, or the magnitude of the charge, divided by the voltage between the plates. And so the charge is exactly what it was before. It, it hasn't changed. My, if these two plates are just floating around in space, there was nothing that took away charge from either one of those plates. So my charge is the same as my old charge, which I'll just call Q old. But my voltage 
is one over epsilon r times my old voltage. And Q old over V old, this is just my old capacitance. And so my new capacitance is epsilon r times my old capacitance. This is my new capacitance. And so by inserting a material between these two plates, I reduced the electric field inside and I increased the overall capacitance. What this means is if I increased the voltage, so if I, if I increased the voltage, I could now get a much higher charge than I could with my old capacitor. So if I increased the voltage back to what it was originally, I'd get a much larger charge. And similarly, I can also store a much higher energy because energy is one half CV squared. So at a fixed voltage, because my capacitance is higher, I can store more charge and I can store more energy. And that's very useful. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.